Hey friends, welcome back. So if you're struggling to lose that extra five or 10 pounds and you're seemingly doing everything right when it comes to diet, exercise, sleep, stress reduction, and you're not able to lose the weight, you might want to consider minimizing your exposure to persistent organic pollutants and environmental chemicals. There's a theory known as the contamination theory of obesity that I wanted to further explain to you in today's video. I wanna share with you that this paper here, A Contamination Theory of Obesity Epidemic by Ethan and Sarah Ludwin Perry. This came out in November of 2020. I think it's a great paper because it talks about how there's problems with all sorts of theories and models when it comes to explaining the obesity epidemic with regards to sugar consumption, over calories, under exercise. There are shortcomings to all those models. So why not consider an alternative hypothesis? And that is that persistent exposure to environmental chemicals, endocrine disrupting chemicals, perfluoro compounds, phthalates, plastics, that that might be Part of the reason why people struggle with weight loss, because as you've heard before, the solution for pollution is dilution, meaning that when, say, you get sick and you have like a tummy upset because you ate some, you had some food poisoning, what happens? You frequently get diarrhea. A lot of water goes to the colon to dilute, you know, the solution for pollution is dilution, right? Because you have a bacterial uh, imbalance or a viral imbalance in your gut. And so your body is trying to dilute it and, and get rid of it, get rid of that pollution. Well, what does the body do when you're polluted with persistent organic pollutants, antibiotics, perfluoro compounds, flame retardants, xenoestrogens, phthalates, atrazine? Well, it could be and one mechanism, one proposed mechanism, is the body increases its fat reservoirs because many of these compounds, particularly the flame retardants, perfluoros, the, the bisphenol A's and so forth, and the bisphenol category of compounds, PCBs, guess what? Those are fat soluble. So they get stored in body fat. So the more body fat you have, the more that you can dilute this pollution. Remember, the solution for pollution is dilution. So it turns out that there's a lot of evidence to show this epidemiologically. People who have higher levels of, of phthalates and PCBs and organochlorine compounds and organofluorine compounds in their urine generally have higher body mass indexes and, and higher body fat percentages compared to lean counterparts. So why is that? Well, again, it could be that the body is naturally trying to protect itself by increasing fat reservoirs as a way to dilute these poisons. So I implore you, if you're struggling with body composition is issues, if you're doing, you're doing everything right, you're exercising, you're compressing your feeding window, you're doing a low carb diet, you're carb cycling, you're fasting, you're working on your stress management and your sleep and you're like, I'm not losing any weight. I encourage you to consider this hypothesis. Now we're gonna continue on and talk about sauna therapy, detoxification, and much more. But first, just want to say thank you for being here. Thanks for hitting the like button. Thank you for leaving a comment and sharing this video. One of the best ways to actually support the elimination of some of these not-so-health-promoting compounds is N-acetylcysteine and glycine. We know that the glutathione tripeptide is our body's most abundant antioxidant. It's also involved in detoxification. And so, look, we're all exposed to these compounds in our air, food, water, clothing, cosmetic products. I mean, these things are everywhere, friends, especially if you drink alcohol or go out to dinner. So I recommend periodically consuming NAC glycine, and that's what we formulated over at Myoscience, the NAC glycine supreme, to help your body eliminate some of these nasty things uh, and support glutathione synthesis because glutathione is so important. So if you eat out, if you eat packaged food, if you travel, if you're getting new furniture or a new car, you might want to consider periodically supporting your glutathione levels with NAC. So I'll put links below to the NAC Glycine Supreme. You can save with the code podcast there. So where is the big source of exposure for these compounds? Well, it turns out, as I mentioned, food packaging is a huge one. So not drinking out of plastic bottles, not getting coffee out. So coffee cups, I can't remember how many trillions of, of microplastic particles, but it's orders of, it's insane. It's like, I think 75 trillion or some absurd number of plastic particles, microplastics specifically, in every espresso that you get when you go out. So a simple tactic here, you wanna go out and have coffee with your friend, okay? Just say, hey, can I get the coffee in a for here mug? The barista might look at you like, oh, you're gonna make me wash a mug? But you're like, yeah, I'd rather have that as opposed to having hot coffee in a Teflon or, or micro, microplastic lined disposable cup, because that's a very simple thing to do. Don't eat out at fast food restaurants, because what do you get? You get hot food wrapped in microplastic and Teflon and these things. 
trust me, friends, that stuff is getting into your food, it's getting into your body. And the more that you're exposed to that, you might cause adipogenesis or the formation of fat cells. Your body's trying to dilute the pollution, okay? So that's just another thing. Drink filtered water. I've done, we've done a bunch of videos on, and the unboxing of the, the custom pure water filter that I recommend. You can get a Berkey. There's a lot of water filters that you can get. Really important. Open up the windows in your house. I see so many people, windows are closed, doors are closed. They, there's this perception that the nature is bad because there's pathogens, pathogens in nature. So open up the window, open up the windows, let air circulate on that sunny day, let air circulate because it turns out that couches are furniture. There was rules created in the nineties that mandated that furniture supply companies line furniture and put flame retardants in the furniture. And those things break down the off gas and they get into your house. They get into your air, they get into your body, wash your clothes. When you go out and get new clothes, wash them because there's often these compounds that are in clothing, microplastics, and even flame retardants in, for example, stuffed animals that your child sleeps with. I mean, this is insane that we even have to think about this. Also cosmetics. It's been estimated that the average woman puts 168 some odd chemicals in her body every day with cosmetics, with lotions, with makeup, with facial creams and the like. Okay. So get rid of that stuff. And and favor and vote with your dollar. Uh, buy cosmetics and, and skincare products that don't have these phthalates and parabens and perfumes and fragrances because those are considered persistent organic pollutants, endocrine disruptors. Bad news, bad news bears, right? The other thing that you want to consider is actively detoxifying. We talked about supporting N acetylcysteine, the amino acids that comprise the glutathione tripeptide. Glutathione is very important, but also sweating, just sweating by doing hot yoga, doing exercise, going in the sauna, whether it's an infrared sauna or a classic finish sauna, like I showed you how to build two years ago. Any form of sweat is good because what's found in sweat, cadmium, arsenic, atrazine, mercury, lead, all the heavy metals that you do not want in your body are found in sweat. So the more sweat, the more you can sweat and get rid of these things, the better off you're going to be. But it's best to minimize your exposure to these compounds first. Another thing that people don't think about is frequency of going to the bathroom, specifically regarding number two, right? Taking a crap is a good way to get rid of these things in your food and your in your body. So if you're constipated, there's this whole phenomenon known as enterohepatic recirculation, where your liver can detoxify these things and metabolize them and excrete, you know, them in bile acids and so forth. But if you're constipated, they can be recirculated through this system called this enterohepatic recirculation. So if you're constipated, work on not being constipated. Try to optimize your body's circadian rhythms. Make sure you're staying hydrated. Take electrolytes. You know, optimize your, your circadian hygiene and light exposure and, and darkness at night. So those are some things to consider. But the big one is minimizing exposure. So just eating whole real foods that are not in packages. That's why in our house, we don't buy the chips anymore. We don't buy the cookies and the crackers and these things that are found in these plastic lined containers because that stuff can get into your food supply. Another big source that I think no one's talking about is, is disposable masks. These things have microplastics. They have chemicals. In fact, studies have shown this, that disposable masks and, and, and the microplastics contained therein break down and they get inhaled and they get into your body. That's not a good thing, especially if you're going through these masks all the time, I don't like the environmental impact that they have, but if you have to wear them because you're a health professional, get a new one. Don't, don't continue to wear the same old one because the more that it's broken down, the easier it gets in. Last, but certainly not least, grocery store receipts. It's well known that grocery store receipts can be lined with bisphenol A and phthalates. And a lot of people, what they do when they go to the grocery store is they use a hand sanitizer and they touch the receipts, which can actually increase the, the dermal or the skin absorption of these compounds. It's crazy, right? So people think they're doing everything right, by using a hand sanitizer when they leave Target, then they touch the receipt and they put it in their pocket and they're actually absorbing those compounds, increasing the absorption of that. So friends, we need to be aware of this. Remember, solution is a dilution for pollution and that might be why another, hy another hypothesis, another reason why people are gaining weight at unprecedented levels because we've seen weight gain in dogs, we've seen weight gain in children, we've seen weight gain in adults. And the, the, the use of plastics and new, new chemical compounds is only increasing in its frequency in our environment. So we need to be very proactive about this because they alter hormones. The persistent organic pollutants do not adhere to linear pharmacokinetics, meaning it's like with testosterone or estrogen it's, or thyroid hormones, picograms, 
these these compounds are bound to binding globulins and all that. The the endocrine disrupting chemicals are not bound to binding globulins. They're not bound to albumin or sex hormone binding globulins. So even if you're exposed to picograms or nanogram levels of these compounds, they can go in and, and bind to the estrogen receptor and start to stimulate estrogen, start to stimulate adipogenesis and cause health issues. So be aware of this. Definitely check out the interview that we did with Dr. Anthony J. We talked all about this. I think there's a lot of good nuggets in there. But uh, remember, sweat, minimize your exposure, and consume compounds like sulfur-containing compounds in eggs, in curcumin, in garlic, uh, whey protein, meat, and then also uh, consider supplementing with an acetylcysteine, glycine, and taurine. So hopefully you found this helpful. I'll put links to this article in the description, and we'll catch you on a future one down the road. Bye now.